by embracing a scientific lens. We have ensured that our work is evidence-based and data-driven, and by valuing transparency and openness, we have aimed to foster trust and collaboration with the public. The panel's comprehensive study into unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAP, has led to several crucial findings. We began by rigorously assessing the current state of UAP data. It is essential to clarify, based on our current findings and methodology, that we find no evidence to suggest that UAP are extraterrestrial in origin. And in any search for interesting anomalies, the first step is to eliminate the chaff of conventional events before moving on to identify novel phenomena. With a rigorous methodology, collaborative efforts, public engagement, NASA can be a key player in the whole of government approach to understanding UAP. Thank you. How can we make the determination of what something isn't when we don't know what it is? And B, after a careful review of the data, if it's determined that some, underline the word some 10 times, UFOs or UAP originate from a non-human intelligence, what's the plan to disclose that to the public? Mission of NASA is to find out the unknown. I've said several times in my comments here today that we NASA deal openly and we will be transparent on this. And we're trying to address the, uh, the question of there's so much uh, concern that there's something locked up classified uh, and that the, the American government is not being open. Uh, well, we are the American government, and we are open, and we're going to be open about this. Whatever we find, we're going to tell you. There's, there's a lot of, uh, of folklore out there. Uh, that's why we entered the stage, the arena, to try to get into this uh, from a science point. We do have our key uh, agency goals. We have obviously our, our goals in the science mission directorate, our, our themes that we, we follow. And one of those, as the administrator described, is the search for life elsewhere. And we do that. Um, and, and he described the research beautifully that um, what we need to find is a rocky planet around a, you know, a hospitable star that isn't too violent. We do that with the James Webb telescope. We'll be doing that when we launch the Nancy Grace Roman telescope. Uh, that even has a coronagraph around it to block out the light of the neighboring stars and really let us look at those those um, those possible planets. And then beyond that, uh, the next um, big telescope recommended by the Astrophysics Decadal is, is the Habitable Worlds Observatory, actually a mission designed to look for hospitable and find like Earth 2.0 in another stellar system. I was privy to talk to the Navy pilots and to see the video of what they encountered off the coast of California in 2004. That was in a classified setting then, but this is now, and you have now seen that video, and you have heard uh, from those former Navy pilots. Uh, is that of a concern to the, the Department of Defense? Of course it is. Uh, and uh, therefore, we're going to continue our search from a scientific point of view. It's going to be, uh, if those other agencies continued their search, we're going to be glad to join in with them. But our stuff is going to be open. Has NASA been in touch with the Mexican authorities about the rather sensational revelations earlier this week of two allegedly non-human corpses? And what, of any importance, do you attach to these discoveries? We don't know the nature of those samples that were shown in front of them. If I was the Mexican government, I would make our banking recommendation to the Mexican government. That's not our charge here. We're doing this for NASA. My recommendation was, if you have something strange, make samples available to the world scientific community, and we'll see what's there. I'll just add that one of the, the main goals of what we're trying to do here today is to move conjecture and conspiracy towards science and sanity, and you do that with data, as David says, and that's the whole purpose of this study. 
Your report mentioned that AI could be very useful in helping in this investigation. How do you see that, Beth? Well, why limit us in anything in uh, interpretation of data? Uh, and AI is just coming on the scene uh, to be explored in all areas. So why should we limit any technological tool in analyzing data that we have? We use AI uh, or artificial intelligence and machine learning throughout our NASA science portfolio. It is an amazing tool for helping us to actually find often signatures that signatures that are sort of buried in data. Do I personally believe that AI needs to be uh, have some boundaries? The answer to that for our existentialism, yes. Any attempts to uh, that the Congress has underway to try to write a law that would appropriately uh, put uh, guardrails around AI for other reasons is in any way going to inhibit us from utilizing the tools of AI to help us in our quest on this specific issue. A month and a half ago, Mr. David Grush said under oath in Congress that the U.S. government is in possession of UAPs and extraterrestrial life. Um, how can you be sure at NASA that other parts of uh, the U.S. government is being transparent? Uh, what he said, if I recall having seen this uh, on the nightly news, was that he had a friend that uh, knew where a warehouse was that had uh, an UFO locked up in a warehouse. He also said he had another friend that uh, said that he had parts of an alien. Whatever he said, where's the evidence? Yeah, he also, my response. Excuse me. He also said that he did interview over 40 employees at the Pentagon. Show me the evidence. 